Hello, today I'm going to be working on my third batch of homebrew ever. We're going to be doing a Mexican cerveza. Just picked up this pack today and show you the contents here that we'll be dealing with. So you've got your liquid malt, got your yeast packet, that's a dry yeast. Uh, you got your sack right here for uh, steeping the grains. And here are said grains here. And spice pack. This is new to me. I haven't seen that before in any of the, uh, the other two batches that I had done. So it must be something for the Mexican cerveza. Your bottle caps. That's going to be the very last step weeks from now. Uh, here are some we're going to be using those today. Okay. Uh, priming sugar, that's not going to be used until uh, bottling day. That's also one of the final steps there. There's our cat making noise in the background. Rice syrup solids, that's also new to me. I haven't seen that before. I've only seen the, the hops and the malt. Uh, and then another thing of the liquid malt. So that's pretty common. You usually have, for a five gallon uh, brew, You'll have uh, two things of malt, either in liquid form and or dry malt form. So those are your contents of the brew packet. Today we're going to be using the malt, from experience anyway, the malt, yeast. That's going to be one of the last steps today. I know this is going to be one of the first steps, the steeping of the grains. Uh, I'm going to guess that the rice syrup solids come in pretty soon, as well as the spice pack and the hops. The hops are, of course, going to be in that process somewhere around here. So I just like to lay everything out that I know I'm going to need in this day. Uh, I am a sack for steeping the grains there. So I've got my five gallon brewing pot right there. So this all comes in a kit. Like if you want to get a starter's kit, um, you get the brew pot, you get the brew bucket, the, this is the bottling bucket because it's got the little spigot right there, and then your brew bucket is the one that uh, does not have a spigot, but you can put a lid on it with a rubber gasket uh, for the airlock, and I'll show you that later too. The most important things, if not the most important thing, is to make sure that you clean and sterilize every single piece of equipment. Uh, this is the cleaning solution. Uh, make sure you follow whatever instructions come with that. I recommend just using whatever the kit comes with. And then there's a sanitizer that goes with that as well. There's a, there's a, some other brand, Iostar and Star San or something like that are two common ones. Uh, again, make sure that you follow the instructions with that. Don't use too much or too little, but every single piece of equipment that's going to come into contact with anything that you're brewing you want to clean and sterilize thoroughly. Um, now they do say that boiling will kill any of the unwanted bacteria. I try not to even think about that. Just go ahead and clean and sterilize everything every step of the process that you can, you know, with, within reason. Just make sure it's nice and clean and sterilized. Make sure that you get more water than you think you need because when you go to boil everything um, a lot of the moisture is going to come off which is okay that's normal but you don't want to be short clean water you could use municipal water many people say that's fine I get the actual spring water and if you have water that's chlorinated or even if you use chlorine instead of one of those sanitizers to sterilize your equipment you could get some kind of an off flavor um, so that's not really going to hurt anything, it's just going to make it taste different. So. so Earlier I said that this was a five gallon brewing pot, that's actually four gallons I think. Yeah, maybe four and a half if you push it. But uh... So heating up the water now, pour two and a half gallons in there per the instructions of the spring water. Um, so you want to read over all the instructions first that come with the kit and you know, just make sure that you understand them. I'm sure if there's a guy at a local shop, he'd be happy to, you know, answer any questions on that, or you could send me a question. I'll see if I can answer it. Um, 
So first thing that we're doing, uh, warming up that water. It's going to be warmed up to between 150 and 165 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not quite boiling, but it is a good steeping temperature for grains or even you know tea if you want to think of it that way. So I'm going to pour the uh, crushed grains into the bag that we're going to use for steeping. Pour the grains into the bag. Um, expect that you are going to make a mess during this whole process. I put a plate down under this thing because some of the finer pieces are just, they're going to come through. You need to tie a loose knot in the top of this thing and when you place it into the water when it's at an appropriate temperature, which it's still getting there, um, you don't want it to be touching the bottom because it, it might scald on the bottom of the pot there when it gets that hot. So. You want to take time to make sure that you have everything that you need. Uh, so this is a little bit of an off color here because of the IO Star sanitizer because it has some iodine in it. Um, so what you got here is the airlock. The way that this works is it lets air bubbles out and doesn't let anything in. So it helps to um, let off the carbon dioxide when it's fermenting later and uh, that way the bucket doesn't pop or explode or anything. And I need a GoPro or something, I can't do that with one hand. So you got this little mechanism here on the inside that will raise up when gas is escaping and then lower again. So the trick is you want to have a little bit of uh, fluid in here to help form that seal. And it has a line in the middle to kind of show you where you should fill up that liquid. Um, and if you use some of the um, water with some sanitizer in it, that's a good idea. Just to doubly make sure that you don't get any unwanted bacteria in there. Um, so the next thing that we're probably going to need to use here is the thermometer. So make sure that that's been sterilized because that's going to be going in your pot. And you're going to be using it later too for when we cool things down. It's making a lot of noise, but it's taking a while to heat up. You can tell when it starts getting sort of steamy in there, you should take a reading with your thermometer, see about how close we're getting, because again, you need to get up to at least 150, but you don't want to get much above 165 Fahrenheit. Um, so I showed you some of the other equipment that's in the usual kit. Um, so these are the things that we'll be using today. Uh, this is for stirring, and here is the hydrometer. Um, we'll go over a little bit more of that later. But uh, other things that are in the kit that we're not going to be using today are the brush uh, bottle. Uh, there's a wire brush for bottles, and there's a wire brush for your carboy. And the carboy is another container that kind of looks like those jugs that you turn upside down in a... Uh, you know, in an office for a water cooler, and so we'll also go over that some more later too. Okay, while I'm still waiting for the water to get to the right temperature, I looked ahead in the instructions and uh, lined out everything that I'm going to need to do here. So the first thing that's going to go in after the grains have been steeped is one container of the liquid malt extract. That's this guy right here. Next, and this goes in with it at the same time the rice syrup solids. Now one tip that you'll see probably in the instructions for the liquid malt extract, it's really thick and syrupy, so what you want to do is um, maybe heat it up in your sink with some hot water to loosen it up and then you can pour it into the boiling pot a lot easier. Uh, next thing will be we're uh, boiling at this point once these two things are added then it's going to be one, po one packet of hops, more boiling, another packet of hops, more boiling. Then the spice pack goes in with the other container of the liquid malt extract. And then once we cool everything down, uh, the very last thing is going to be the yeast packet. So just went through the process pretty quick there as a summary, but it's good to line up your ingredients in the order that you know you're going to need to use them. Um, Later on, some of the other equipment that I hadn't really specified. Um, this is a stopper for the carboy, um, which you know, you'll see that later, but it just goes in the top as an airlock. Um, really, it's like a gasket for the airlock. And the other thing is a siphon, and you don't really need to use the siphon until you get a transfer it. Uh, 
We are at an acceptable temperature now. It is at 165, so I'm going to crank back the heat a little bit and make sure that it doesn't go much above that. Um, I think 170 is when it starts to really start uh, releasing some of the tannis, as they call it, from the grains, and, and apparently that's not good. It would create some off flavors or something, so uh, temperature's good. I'm going to be constantly checking the temperature on this as we're going through. The grains are going to steep for 20 minutes. So I'm going to rig this up so it's not touching the very bottom, but it's completely submerged. Okay, and set our timer. 20 minutes. Again, constantly checking the temperature to keep it between 150 and 165 ideally, but definitely not above 170. I'm going to start the hot bath for the liquid malt extract container. Uh, just pouring hot water into the stopped up sink. Uh, I made sure to clean the sink beforehand. Um, you know, again, they say anything that's going to be boiled, like in the pot over there, you don't have to worry about too much. Um, to me, it doesn't matter. I just do, I, I sanitize it no matter what. So, yeah, make sure that you keep checking the temperature on this thing because it can get away from you pretty easy. Um, especially with this electric stove with the, the knob, you know, it's, it doesn't have a temperature on there, it just has what the number is, and mine's somewhere about, somewhere between 5 and 7 is usually the, the happy point for this, and then for boiling, uh, with this electric stove, I mean, we're going to have to kick it up to high, I'm sure, with this much water in that big of a pot, um, so thermometer back to be sanitized, even if it is going to be boiling. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and start this guy's bath to get him nice and loosened up, like in a spa, you know. It's okay to submerge it and just get it nice and loosened up in there because it's basically like molasses. You know how that, how thick that is. Um, so it'll make it a little thinner, a little easier to get everything out of there. One of the tips also, when you got to pour the liquid malt extract in here, um, if you're brave enough, you can kind of scoop some of this water when you're mixing it in. Once you've poured out the majority of the contents of the liquid malt extract, and uh, you know that'll loosen it up and let you get out the rest of the actual malt that's in there. And I've got my rice syrup solids open here, and we've just got a few more minutes of steeping left. So we've been steeping at the correct temperature, which is between 150 and 165 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the, the steeping bag with the grains out, let it drain in there, and then the next step will be to bring it to a boil. It says a gentle rolling boil. I'm not sure exactly what uh, the definition of that is, but what I do is just get it boiling, you know, like you're boiling noodles or something. So uh, it says to let all the water drain in here, but don't squeeze the bag. Don't, you know, press it or anything like that. All right, so that's probably good enough. Uh, Going to leave that there for now. Imagine you could put that on your compost or just toss it or whatever. Uh, so I'm going to crank that baby up, put the lid on to get her boiling. So they, I think they say technically at this point it's called wort, W-O-R-T. Once we get it boiling, uh, we're going to add in liquid malt extract, which is warmed up now nicely. And then the rice syrup solids. And i got to stir it in and everything. It's going to take two hands, so I'll show you what it looks like right after that. I thought you might be interested to see what it looks like in the container here. Really, I mean, in this light, it looks a little bit like dulce de leche if you ever had that. Uh, molasses is a little bit darker, but um, anyway, that's what the liquid malt looks like that I'm going to be stirring in. And I just realized that part of the paint is actually coming off of the side of this container, so I'm not going to be dipping it directly into the wort. Uh, but I am going to use a glass to pull out some of the water from here and pour it into that container once it's empty to get just a little bit more of that extract out. Now with an electric stove, heating up and cooling down your mixture, your wort, your beer, whatever, seems to be the biggest 
time-consuming part of all this. So um, I was just looking over the instructions some more, and it looks like both of these uh, hop packets are the same. Some recipes they'll have uh, add one type of hops and then another, but these are both the same. So um, we'll add one pack of the hops and then uh, boil for 15 minutes and then add another pack and boil for 35 minutes apparently and then after that the liquid malt extract and then uh, boil some more, terminate boil and then uh, after that's probably going to be the yeast so the, uh, oh and the spice pack goes along with that second pack or the second container of the liquid malt extract and I looked here, it says, uh, I thought it was going to be some mix of spices, and maybe it is, but it just says uh, that the contents are lime peel. So it must just be dried lime peel in there. It looks like there's some other stuff, maybe a secret proprietary ingre ingredient or something, but it might just be dried lime peel. One thing I didn't mention, which is probably in the instructions, you want to have some ice on hand or something that can cool this down rapidly. Once we get done with the whole boiling process, I think the total boiling minutes is 60. So if you don't have ice now, you got some time to go get some or have somebody get some for you because that'll really help out. Otherwise, you'd have to maybe put it in the freezer because um, you don't want to leave it outside of a sealed container for too long because that just invites uh, foreign bacteria to get into there once it's cooling. Um, and you can't put the yeast in when it's too hot because my understanding is it'll maybe kill the yeast or it just doesn't work right or something so have some ice ready um, or ice packs or something to cool it down in the sink once we terminate the boiling after we go through putting all this in and the different stages for boiling. The malt extract is in and I was stirring it pretty thoroughly scraping the bottom with this stir to make sure that it's not scalding on the bottom with it being so dense, it probably goes straight to the bottom. Um, what it said is to pour all this stuff in there and bring it back up to a boil before proceeding to the next step. So the liquid malt extract is in there. Um, poured some additional water in here to get that last little bit out. Um, there we go. I might get some more too. It still looks a little gooey in there. Again, just plan on making a mess throughout this process. Okay, give it the old swirl. End up. There you go. Okay, so we're done with that container. Um, now, part of the reason that I wanted to do this video is to kind of show you some of the mistakes that I might have made. So, whether it's this rice syrup solids or dry malt extract. It, open and open the container as much as you can when you go to pour it in. I mean, just don't dump it all in one clump, but you know, do it pretty quickly and stir it in, um, because the steam will start to make it clump. You can see here, right where it was being poured out, it started clumping up, and so you're going to miss out on some of what was in that container. The last batch that I did, I did was a Kolsch, and it had some dry. Uh, malt extract and that same thing happened. It started turning into like moist breadcrumbs or soggy breadcrumbs at that point. So you don't want that clumping together. So just stirring this very well to make sure that I scrape the bottom that none of the malt or anything is scalding. And I'm going to add some hops here uh, once it returns to rolling boil. Ounce packet of hops. U.S. Brewers Gold and these are actually hot pellets. I'm going to put these in and then it's going to boil for 15 minutes and it's always good to mark down your times on here and you can kind of see once you add the hops it, it even changes the color of what you see boiling up and throughout the process especially as you add more hops you'll see it uh, kind of frothing up on the sides almost like sea foam and when that happens, I just kind of like scrape it back down in there. I like to make sure it has all of the intended flavors and ingredients and everything. But uh, yeah, while you're letting that boil for 15 minutes, um, you know, why not just take a minute and smell the hops packet? Because, I mean, that's where a lot of the flavor comes from and the smell. And 
it's it's just a really cool unique thing. Another thing, uh, do not let your pot boil over. See, the temptation might be to uh, put the lid on and just leave it. It boils up pretty quick. You know, it's really tough to control it at that happy medium. And just expect that you're going to lose a little volume from this process, especially because you're uh, you're boiling it for a long time, a total of 60 minutes, I think. So it, there's there's basically no way to get it just right unless that's your superhero power is knowing how something is going to boil over 60 minutes on an electric stove with the lid on because you can't see inside there. Um, maybe you can do it. I cannot. My recommendation is to just leave it open so that you can monitor it and just know that you're going to have to add more water later on. Approaching our 15 minute mark with boiling the first packet of hops and it says the next thing is to add the other packet of hops. By the way, as a kind of a pro tip, open your windows because if your house is anything like ours, it's going to retain a lot of that moisture, you know, depending on what's going on with uh, the weather, but it's going to steam up your windows and essentially make it like a sauna, unless you want that. You know, if you want a, a sauna, then do not open your windows. All right, I'm going to stir these bad boys in and set a timer for... 35 minutes according to the instructions. So it'd be a good time to go watch some cartoons or read a book or whatever. It's going to be a while. So with about 15 minutes left in this boiling step, I'm going to create another warm bath for the second and final thing of the liquid malt extract. And got to loosen it up just like the other one so I can stir that in easily and um, also the spice packet goes in with that at the same time so that'll be easy to just pop open and stir in with everything else. The idea to stir it every now and then, maybe, I don't know, like every 10 minutes or something just for the heck of it. Make sure that nothing's resting on the bottom or scalding there because, uh, you know, if anything in particular burns on the bottom of this mixture then it's, it's going to throw off the taste a little bit. It, well, that wasn't smart. I put the lid on there for a little bit and turned down the heat thinking, oh, you know, that'll be a good idea to uh, keep some of the steam from escaping, keep from losing some of the volume, and then almost immediately it boiled over and now I've just got a kind of a mess on my hands, but, you know, it's, it's not going to kill it, but, you know, that it, it could be better. <laughs> so, I recommend keeping the lid off of there. Third time doing this and still tried it, so there you go. Looking good. We're at uh, almost 35 minutes of boiling that. And let's see, so we need to do the liquid malt extract, second container, and the spice pack. Now, um, I also wash my hands a lot during this whole process to make sure that there's no contamination of any kind. I have poured in the second container of the liquid malt extract and that spice packet which um, once I opened it it did smell like dry lime you know so I guess that'll add to the Mexican style cerveza flavor um, again stirring and scraping the bottom of this pot so that the liquid malt will not scald on the bottom. You know, just get the whole bottom of that pot there to make sure that that part does not scald. And then we're on the home stretch for the boiling part. That's uh, 10 more minutes. And then we're going to transfer it. Well, we're going to cool it down, and then we're going to transfer it to the actual brew bucket. Waiting for the final boiling stages. Um, I'll tell you what I've been doing. Uh, well, <laughs> what I did the last time with the Kolsch, that turned out very well. Um, I looked at the instructions and tried to interpret it the best that I could. So secondary carboy or two-stage fermentation, it says uh, within five to seven days the fermentation is going to start slowing um, and before that fermentation completes you want to um, siphon to the carboy or secondary fermentation. So I'm doing this on May the 6th and I'm 
going to plan to do the um, transfer to the secondary fermentation on May the 10th. That's what I did last time and it turned out pretty well. And I'm going to leave it in there for a week. And then uh, bottling day is going to be 517. So I'm going to give it a week in the secondary fermentation. Now this doesn't mean that when I bottle it it's ready. It's actually going to have to sit in there for another two weeks. And that's the key. You know, you um, prepare the priming sugar, which is um, basically the whole packet of five ounces that comes with the kit. And that was confusing to me the first time. Uh, my very first batch was a red ale. And I was looking at this conversion thing where it says one ounce of priming sugar is equal to two and a half tablespoons. The packet comes with five ounces of sugar, depending on which one you get. I mean, it gives you exactly how much you need. It should say, just dump the whole packet of sugar in here when you're dissolving it into the saucepan. With the end of our 10 minute final boiling step uh, for that process. And I'm filling up the sink with some cold water. And I know that I have some freezer packs. Um, you can also use ice ready to go so I'm going to fill this up a little bit and then I'm going to put the pot in here uh, at the end of the 10 minutes to cool it down as quickly as I can and I feel like this is actually a pretty tough part of the process because you want this to cool down as quickly as possible um, before you put the yeast in and it, it needs to cool down to 70 degrees Fahrenheit and the problem is you know you want to leave the lid off so that it can cool down um, but it's exposed, you know, it's like it, there's a potential for foreign bacteria to get in there at that point. So you want to cool down as quickly as possible. Um, some people might have a blast chiller. It, that seems like more of a professional thing. So, you know, whatever method you can use to cool it down as quickly as possible is going to be good before you got to put the yeast in. So we're cooling it down. Um, Remember, it, I think it even says in the instructions, you do not want to put ice directly in the mixture. That's going to throw it off. And so hopefully these ice packs will get it down to a good temperature, 70 degrees pretty quickly. And I mean, I, I wouldn't even check it to see what the temperature is within the first 15 minutes. It's going to take a while to cool this down because it was a boiling temperature. So I'll check it here in just a little bit. I'm actually redrawing the cool down bath because it heated up the water pretty quick. It's almost like trying to cool down a plutonium rod or something. So you might have to do that. Um, you know, do one initial ice bath and then drain out the water that's all heated up and then do another one with ice or, or your uh, freezer packs just to cool it down as quickly as you can. You can see it's still steaming, which probably means it's over 100 degrees. Um, so, yeah, this part takes a while. So, now that the wort has cooled to 70 degrees, I'm going to transfer it to the actual fermentation container. Now, I'm not using a filter, but I am going to avoid transferring the heavy sediment. You can see it gets a little thicker there at the bottom. So I'm just going to leave that last little bit that's in there in the bottom because it's kind of thick. And then we're going to add water to get it up to 5 gallons. While that's filling up, I'm actually going to take the yeast packet and I'm going to sterilize the outside of it because at this point in the process nothing else is going to be boiled. So the germs and additional bacteria could be a concern. the yeast, which means just basically throw it in and stir it around. Now you want to stir the yeast very thoroughly out through here so it gets a good mixture. Basically what we've been doing through this whole process is creating the best possible meal for the yeast so it can 
feed on everything that's in here and create the good alcohol and carbon dioxide that you want in a, in a good beer. Now you don't want to start too vigorously, but uh, just mix it throughout. Now I've already sanitized this lid recently, so I'm going to press this on, make sure we have a good seal all the way around. We should be able to lift it by the lid without it coming off from the sanitizing bucket. And go ahead and put that in the stopper. And now what you do is you put it in a cool, dry place uh, away from the sun. It needs to be at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit and you want to leave it in there for about five days before transferring it to the secondary fermentation which we'll be doing next. All right here we are in the wee hours of the morning and it's been about 12 hours since I put everything in the brew bucket and put the airlock on there and we're getting some bubbles coming out which is perfect that's exactly what we need. So we'll be doing that for a few days, and then we'll transfer it to the secondary fermentation. 